Hi, I'm Mary Berry. My husband John and I bought our house from Ben and Franny Minipee in the fall of 1980. Buying it at that point in our lives with two young children and college tuitions looming in the back of the future was a bit of a stretch, so we rationalized. We said, we'll use it in the winter as well as the summertime. We'll ski and ski and ski. But John Boothman built the house in 1904 as a summer house. No one had ever lived in it in the wintertime. It had no furnace, no insulation, no storm windows. Well, never mind those details. We hired Tom Bean to dig a hole under one end of the house and install a furnace. That was just after the oil crunches of the 1970s. So we put in a wood burning furnace, the one that would kick over to oil if the wood ran out. That way we could ski for more than an hour. <laughs> to build this so-called basement, we had to demolish part of the woodshed. This meant the only way into the basement was from the outside. But that didn't bother us. It was snowing. We were young and hardy. We didn't want to do anything to damage the house's beautiful interior. So we put the heating ducts underneath the house. There would be no heat above the first floor. <laughs> But there was a big wood range in the kitchen, plus two fireplaces and a Franklin stove. Now, by now, you're probably wondering, what were they thinking of? John and I grew up in Tennessee and Kentucky, respectively. We had no idea what a New England winter might be like. However, at the last moment, I must have had a premonition, because I went out and I bought a lot of electric blankets. And we were all set for our first Randolph winter. We wanted to share this experience, and we invited another family to come with us. <laughs> they had a daughter, who was a friend of our daughter, and they had a very small baby. To keep our son company, we invited his best friend to come too. We arrived, four adults and five children of varying ages, on the evening of December the 26th. We had had the foresight to ask Jack Boothman to turn on the furnace a few days earlier to warm up the house in a manner of speaking. <laughs> when we walked in that night, we found a note from Jack saying that the temperature Christmas night had been 25 below. <laughs> you will not be surprised when I tell you that the house wasn't very warm. But we lit a fire in the biggest fireplace and another in the wood range of the kitchen. We heated up some soup and ate it. The adults drank some bourbon. And then we ventured upstairs to make beds. It was very cold upstairs, although some rooms were colder than others. The last beds I made were in the room our daughter and her friend were to share, on the north side of the house. The room looked like a chamber in one of those Swiss hotels that are carved out of the glacier. The walls were literally covered with ice. That night we all went to bed without washing. I don't think the children even took their clothes off. The couple with the baby put a mattress and an electric blanket downstairs in front of the fireplace, where they slept with the baby in between them, and they took turns getting up and putting a log on in the fire. Over the next 10 days, the house got a little bit warmer. The kitchen actually got quite cozy, and we spent a lot of time there. It was one of those Randolph winters that are very cold, but not really very snowy. Nevertheless, we all put on our cross-country skis and plunged into the surrounding woods, even the baby who was strapped to his father's chest. We worked out a routine for dealing with the chilly upstairs. We sat in front of the fire as long as possible, <coughs> playing Monopoly and I doubt it. And then we sent the children upstairs to turn on all the electric blankets. <laughs> My husband John had the worst of it, for he had to get up in the morning and get the furnace going. One day, he met an ermine in the woodshed. <laughs> We've had a number of ermine in our woodshed, actually. The curious white weasel followed him down to the basement and watched while he stoked up the fire. We had many chilly adventures, and when the time came to leave, none of us wanted to go back to Virginia. And we didn't go. Because when we got up the next morning, it was 19 below, and neither of the cars were <laughs> 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 so John had read that on cold mornings in Alaska, people heated the oil in their cars in order to start them. So he lit a camping stove, oh. put it on a piece of wood, and carefully slid it under our car, keeping it away from the gas line. 
Eventually our car started. We jump started in the other car and we set up for a moment. Since then, we have spent portions of 38 winters here in Randall. Our house is snug and cozy and there's even heat upstairs. But every once in a while, someone will say wistfully, remember what an adventure it used to be going to bed? <laughs>